Good afternoon. This is Coach Anthony Williams with Connected Athletics, where we focus on connecting athletes with other athletes and more importantly with college coaches and work on them uh, creating their brand as a transition from high school to college. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. It's based out of Austin, Texas, and we are excited today to showcase another one of my favorite athletes here in the state of Texas. He's a really top offensive lineman from Episcopal High School in the Houston area. I've watched this young man grow and grind since he was in middle school. Everybody put your hands together and say hello to Lewis Chavria. Julius, how you doing? How you doing, Coach? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm good, man. You know, we're in this uh, very interesting COVID-19 environment. Uh, give us an idea of what you're doing to stay uh, busy with your workouts and work on your, on your speed, your strength, and your endurance. Hey, no, this whole coronavirus thing is a challenge for everybody. No one was really expecting it. But we all have to make the best of it. And personally, me, for first off, I am going to school every morning from around 8 to 3. So around uh, that time, I have no, uh, I'm just doing straight school. After school, I'll do workouts. I work out about five to six times a week. On Mondays and Tuesdays, I go with the trainer. And I mean, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go with the trainer. And then Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and Saturdays, I do at-home workouts that I get from a school trainer from the Team Builder app. Good. So you're, you're not letting this, uh, this environment affect your workout. You're working to stay ready for when the season starts, correct? No, not at all. I'm going to be ready. Good, good, good. Hey, well, let's, before we get into the, uh, the, the questions here, let's, let's show some of your highlight video. Uh, it's an impressive video. And just kind of have you talk to some of the plays as coaches watch this, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Let me get over and hit play. And just let me share. Levy, can you see it, Lewis? Yes, sir, I can. Okay. So I so see you play a little bit of center and guard here, right? Yes, sir. Actually, right now I'm seeing your uh, the PowerPoint slide. Okay, let me uh, let me switch back out of that. My fault. Let me stop sharing and let me go. I'm gonna restart your video. Pause it, and then let me go to share over here. All right, you seeing it now? Yes, sir, I do. All right, let me hit play. Let's watch you go to work. Can you see it? Yes, sir, I can. So on that first play, naturally, it was just a dive play, most likely third and short. And so pretty much what I want to do is just destroy the person in front of me. Okay. And this play we saw, that was a that was an outside left play, which is a which pretty much all I wanted to do was reach block. And as I did, I was aiming to get aiming to get outside of him. If not, just throw him to the ground. That play right there mainly was just a dive. But once again, I just want to destroy the person in front of me. And after I do that, just get to second level. This play, as you're seeing right now, is a pulling play, which I pull outside, get the get the DN or the outside linebacker that's right there. And if I can, carry him to get some more uh, second secondary level players. Right now, what you're saying? Luis, you're, you're a good-sized kid, obviously, 6'4", 315. Talk to us about the importance of uh, playing with a low pad level as an offensive lineman. That's very important because for me, for myself, even if there's probably like the smallest kid out there, he'll still be able to beat me if he gets under me, which I, I know that every play. So one thing, I'm, one thing I keep on my mind always is staying low so I can dominate the person in front of me. Okay. Do you prefer guard or center or do you care? Honestly, I can play, I can play both, but I felt more comfortable at center this year. Okay. Is that the position you see yourself playing in college? Yes, sir. I think I think center. I think mostly centers. Will, well, what I'll be playing. Okay. Here's you pulling to the left here. Yes, yeah, so that's actually another. That's actually another uh, outside play, which was uh, Donovan Don Jackson. He comes down, and I pull outside to either get the outside linebacker or the corner, whichever whichever the first guy that comes first in my eye. 
you know, knowing you and watching you since you were in middle school, I've noticed how how better your feet are, how much better they are. You're moving really well on your pulls. Yes, sir. I've been working on that ever since middle school. You know, I realized in middle school that I wasn't the fastest, so I decided to, ever since then I would work on my feet every day. I'll go outside in the back. I'll go in the backyard, work on my feet, do a couple drills, and then when I'm with my trainers, I specifically tell them that I need to work on my feet. I need to get faster. Well, I think I saw you in a couple plays. Have you lined up at a tackle too? Have you, can you play all three positions? Yes, sir. I can. That's the. I'm actually the the player like on the line where if they need me, that's what I'll play. So I did play a little bit of everything this year. I I started at guard and then I moved to center. But if something if something ever happens to one of our tackles, I'll I'll, I'll be the one. I'll be the first one to step up. So pretty much, I was just that audible player that that coach could put me anywhere. Oh, that's awesome. You know, Luis, you're, you're already 6'4", 315. Do you see yourself growing a little bit more, or, or you think you're at the end of your growth spurt? I hope so. I hope I get like an inch or two more. If not, then that, 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 it is what it is. I will be able to size, like weight-wise, I want to get down to around 290, 300 uh, while, I'm playing, while I'm playing this season. Okay. Well, hey, let's let's get into some of the learning more about you as a person. So, you know, obviously you're at a really good uh, academic school at Episcopal. Tell us about the importance of your academics right now. Right now, academics is one thing I'm really looking forward to. It's one of the things that my parents have, like, pushed on me throughout my years of going up to school. So, like, if I ever, if they ever saw anything below a, a, B, a B plus or a B, that, that's something, like, that's a, that's a trigger where I know that like, I need to pick it up. I need to get up to an A. And academics probably will be the most important at the next level, too. Okay. Well, you've got a nice thought, 3.0 right now. You said earlier uh, you, you were scheduled to take the SAT, the ACT, but it got put on. Tell us about the, when you plan on taking it again and, and if you plan on increasing your GPA. Yes, sir. Uh, next time, the, what I'm scheduled to take the SAT is in September, around the 26th, I believe. And to raise my GPA, I, um, just what I need to do is take notes. Like take more notes than I already do, and then study harder. I already get like A's and B's, so what I want to do is mainly uh, my goal is to get all all A's on all my assignments and tests. Okay. Are you taking any AP classes or no? No, sir. I'm not. Okay. Hey, um, tell us about we literally just watch your video a little bit. Tell us about your strengths and weaknesses as a player. What are things you do very well, and so what are some of the things you're working on to improve going into your senior year? Well, some of my strengths, I believe, are getting off the ball and hitting that, and hitting that man in front of me very quick, getting my hands on him and driving him five, ten yards uh, at, at his will. And some of my, some of my weaknesses or stuff that I'm working on is I want my feet to get faster, and I, I personally want to get faster. Also, I want to work on getting to the second level more this next season, which, uh, which is going to be big for, uh, for our running backs because uh, the first hole that we open up, that, that's always going to be there, but the next level is going to be the most important, so it will pretty much guarantee a touchdown. Okay. Tell us, you know, there's a lot of good linemen, offensive linemen in your class. Uh, tell us what you bring to uh, your class. What, what differentiates you over other linemen in your class? I believe what differentiates me is my drive just to get better every day, my determination just to get to that next level, and to always just be above everybody else. And I believe that you know, I'm always gonna bring that. I'm always gonna bring that energy. I'm always gonna keep somebody accountable. I'm always gonna want somebody else to keep me accountable. So I'm not the only one that's just going around and just telling everybody like, "Pick it up, let's go." I want other people to tell me, "Yeah, let's go." Like you're lacking a little bit. So I just want. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna bring that energy, and it's gonna be that one, that leader that's gonna tell everybody just to pick it up and let's go. Okay, let's switch gears here. Uh, talk about your recruit a little bit. You've got six offers. Who are you hearing from? Who do you want to hear from? And are you still open? Yes, sir. So pretty much my recruiting process wasn't this, like my journey has been a little different. So now it's starting, to, it's starting to get exciting. I have six offers from Vanderbilt, SMU, Syracuse, UNLV, ULM, and the University of Houston. And coaches that are texting me or contacting me through Twitter are schools such as San Diego State, Texas Tech, New Mexico, Air Force, Cal, and many more. Okay. Are you still open? Are you going to be closing your list down to top five pretty soon? Or what, what, what's the process going forward? 
Yes, sir. I am actually, I'm still open to any school that would allow me to play, play for them at the next level. But I do realize that this, that this next year is my upcoming senior year. So I do want to get to that point where later in the year, I am, I am closing it down. Okay. Um, tell us about your, you know, obviously the, the importance of your relationship with your uh, coaching staff. Talk to me a little bit about your, your relationship with your position coach, the offensive coordinator and the head coach. Oh, my position coach, uh, Coach Campbell, he, me and him are best friends. I mean, he's, he's always there for me when I need him most, whether it's off the field or on the field. He's always, he's always going to be that guy that I can count on, that I can go to. And uh, my head coach, Coach Lease, that's, that's one energetic man. He, I, I can relate to him so much. He always brings the energy, and I, I always bring the energy. And one thing that like, brought me closer to him this year was wrestling season. He's been pushing me to wrestle for about three years now, and this year I finally budged. And so I joined him in the wrestling room, and in there he's a totally different man. So I feel like our relationship just got better throughout that. Great. That relationship is important. Do you have the ability to go to the coach? Are you one of those players that will go to your coach and say, Coach, let's run this play because I'm dominating my guy, or are you just going to say, hey, whatever play you call, I'm dominating my guy? What kind of relationship do you have from a play calling standpoint? Uh, I have a little bit of both. If I'm dominating my guy, I'm going to let coach know. But if I see a play that's wide open, such as, like, if I, there's a nose guard in front of me and I'm dominating him, I'm telling coach, run dive right now because – this guy is not getting past me. I'm driving, I'm driving this kid 10, 10, 15 yards. Great. Tell us, um, what are some of the things you're uh, looking forward to as you transition to college this time next year? Uh, academics, that's one thing I'm looking forward to because Episcopal, you know, it might be challenging now, but they are preparing me for college, which I've heard from most, like multiple upperclassmen that are already in college now, that Episcopal is going to be that school that's just going to, like prepare me, prepare me for the next level. Also, the energy and the like, the just the work that I'm gonna put in at the next level, and how I'm gonna contribute to the team that I choose. Talk about you guys won the uh, the 4A SPC state championship last year. You're playing with a couple of good players, uh, with Adrian Cormier and, and and Donovan Jackson. Talk about your experience. How did you enjoy that that championship run last year? Oh, it was it wasn't only that championship ring. It was the whole season from practices to the first game to scrimmages that this whole season was just, it was a ride coming from the locker room on the field. doesn't matter. We were all t this year. We could tell that we were a family and that we were just that one unit that we knew we were going to do it. Even if it was like we had our ups and downs, we had adversity, but we all went through that as our coach always said, fight through adversity. And that's just, this season was just amazing to end it out, end it out with the dub. Well, I know you guys lost a few seniors, but you got a lot of a lot of talent and firepower coming back. What are the goals going into this season? This season is to get better and get better as a team. We did lose some key players, but last year we we had we had really cool key players. Our whole line is coming back. We're all going to be seniors. We're going to have Quan running back, AC at running back. So our run game is going to be on point. Our defense is going to be on point as well. So pretty much what we want to do. We want to work. We want to work now, as in Corona, everybody's working now. We want to work in the summer. We're also going to work during practice because we know everybody is not not going to work like us. Like our like our people on our team are just going to push ourselves to like do the extra effort that more than anybody. So pretty much what we don't want to do is just get better than we were last year and chase that ring one more time. Okay. Have you uh, started to talk with your family about your criteria and how you're going to decide what school you're going to commit to? Uh, yes, sir. One thing that's really important is academics. That's that's one thing because I'd rather have a 40-year plan than a four-year plan because I like I want football to like just give me that that stability and for the future. So academics is going to be big. So I have something after football. Said so, uh, say if I just don't make it to the NFL. But, and after that, family, like, I want to feel comfortable where I am. I want to feel like I belong there and the coaches, like, make me belong there. And also, speaking of coaches, I want coaches to make, I want them to, like, let me know when I'm messing up. I don't want anything to be sugarcoated. I don't want anything just to be, like, given to me. I want, I want to be able to work for what I have and know that I've earned my spot when I get there. Is distance a factor? Do you want to be close for your family to see you or are you willing to go anywhere in the country? 
I'm going to go anywhere that somebody gives me a chance to play with their, with their team. Okay. Um, do you have any thought about what you might major in uh, when you get to college and what you want to do after football is over? Yes. Actually, I've been thinking about it for, like, for these past three years in high school, and mechanical engineering is that one thing that's like stood out to me out of all the majors. That's because I've always been that one kid, like ever since I was young, I've always been that one kid that's been hands-on building stuff with Legos, whether it's a science project, doing the egg drop project, building with sticks. I'm always that one kid that's first, like, I want to build stuff. I want to be that one guy that's just like, okay, because my mind is creative. I know, like, if I see something in front of me, I'm going to make something out of it. Let's say somebody watches you play this fall for the first time, and they're going to say, man, that, that kid, that, that lineman, he reminds me of, who do you pattern your game after? Oh, Tyron Smith, Quentin Nelson, and Anthony Munoz. Those are three that I, like, really look up to. And, like, they're just their nastiness and their – they're just a, their agility overall. I want, I want people like I want to remind people of that when they when they watch me play. Uh, that's a good one, Anthony Munoz. I know personally, Hall of Famer, one of the great, one of the greatest offensive linemen to ever play in the NFL. So that's a that's a good yes, person sir. to pass your game off of. Uh, let's switch gears up here. What what are your interests outside of when you're playing or, or working out for football? What kind of hobby? Are you a fisherman? You like to hunt? You ride horses? What do you do in your spare time? Spare time, if I'm not working out, if I'm not doing school, I'm with family or I'm either on the game with my friends. Family, I mainly family because you know we're stuck in the house so why not spend top, spend most of my time with my family usually we play cars we watch movies we just have conversations at the at the dinner table like it's just what we do when COVID-19 eventually when we get on the back side we kind of open things back up what's the number one thing you're looking for doing with your family that you guys used to do normally uh, meeting up and having a good time like say we're going to main event uh, sometimes just like being able to see my being able to see my family and being able just to like give them hugs and like actually like touch them because right now I, I like I'm taking social distancing seriously so it's just like that block where like it's depressing where I can't like hug them but I still like whatever chance I get to see them is the chance that I'll, like, I'll, I'll take okay um they're obviously dealing with adversity is something that's you know, it's, you know critical success success as a football player tell us about a time personally or in football that you had to overcome some adversity well it's been this these past three years you know uh these past three years i did make it to a championship and those first two years i just we, we couldn't pull it off so you know every year we had to work harder and work harder and throughout those throughout those seasons where we didn't win we did have our adversity where we were either down we we're either down and a half and we had to come together as a team and work hard but this year all that we surpassed all the adversity and finally got, got finally got the ship okay ask you a simple question that most college coaches are going to ask you maybe they already have why do you love football man that's football has always been that escape for me it's always ever since i was young you know i played basketball i played baseball played soccer but football was just that one sport that stood out to me and it was always that one sport that I just, like, I could go out there and have the time of my life hitting and then just the teamwork overall. Like, you have to work as a team. That's what that's what really bonded me to it. I still, like, ever since I have friends that I played with since third grade that I'm still friends with now that I consider family. And so football just pretty much just brought, brought me that, like, that drive to get better every day. And that discipline where it's just like, all right, I can't mess up. I can't do anything. It's like, I need to stay good for football. Okay. You know, we're still obviously in this COVID-19 environment. We spend a lot of time at home. What do you, are, you on, are you a Netflix guy? Are you playing some video games? Are you a TikTok guy? Tell us about what you do to just <laughs> have fun and release some steam. So what I do really after like spending time with the family and doing like schoolwork and home and working out, the game. The game is something I do a lot. I play a lot. I play a lot of Call of Duty, play some Madden. And it's just like the time where like I can't see my friends like like right now. So over the game is where I just I talk to them, have a good time and just release all release all the energy I have and relax. Okay. What's your favorite app on your cell phone right now? What do you what do you uh, is Twitter? Is are you a TikTok guy? What do you what do you start well, I think I believe it's between Twitter and Instagram. Those two are like uh, Twitter is because you know you get a lot from Twitter. No matter like it varies with, like whatever you get in memes, football. It's just 
everything there's everything you can love on Twitter. Okay. What about your uh, your playlist? What do you listen to when you work out, or what's your favorite pregame uh, music or artist? I mix it up a bit. I'm a type of guy to just like listen to a little bit of everything. One day it will be R and B and rap. The next day it will be country. And the next day it will just be like slow, just like slow songs, where it's just like I like I'm feeling smooth today. I'm just gonna work out, have a have a good time, and just relax while I'm working out. Okay. When things open back up and you get a chance to get back outside, what, what's your shoe game looking like? What are you rocking when, when we get past because COVID-19 environment when you hang out? Jays. That, that when I dress up, Jays. And then also previously before all the coronavirus stuff, I did buy some black, the Black History with Nikes. Those, those, were my, those are my favorite right now. <laughs> okay. Hey, obviously you play with a couple of really good players. You mentioned AC and Donovan Jackson earlier. Who else have you played uh, on your team? or you played against that you'd say, hey, these college coaches need to get on this, these guys. These guys are pretty good. Uh, first off is Quan Mar my running backs. Quan Marion and AC, those guys are shifty. They can find the hole. They're fast. They're powerful. Another guy is Cameron Moore. He's at Travis High, he's at Travis High School, and he's, just, he's a dog. He's, gonna, he's that one that's just going to – like you need him on your team. Okay. Tell me about some of the uh, most influential people in your life right now. Uh, family. That's that. Those are the most influential people. So family, because I just I want to do good for them. Like my mom and my dad, they always keep me right. But besides them, it's probably it's most likely the 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 little kids in my family. You know, my the little ones, my little sister, my little cousins. You know, they like they all look up to me. So I'm I was, I've always been like that big cousin. That's always been like like he's gonna make it someday, and I just I want to do that for them. So are you the oldest in your family? Where are you, where are you? I'm about the oldest. I there I have an aunt that's older than me, and then I have a few like aunts and uncles. But as in like, as in like my age, yes, that I'm the oldest compared to like everybody else. Everybody else in my family, I have like little nieces. They're around eight, nine, ten ish. So yeah. Good. What are the sports you play in and have you played in high school? Are you a track and field guy, you a basketball guy, baseball? You mentioned that earlier. Uh, freshman year, I played basketball. You know, that was something I did to keep in shape. And then last year, it was strict, strictly football. Wanted to get better, wanted to work on my game. And this year, I dabbed a little in wrestling. That right there was a sport that you, like, you need mental toughness for that. You're getting, you're getting thrown to the ground. In practice, you're getting thrown to the ground every, like every two minutes, and you gotta learn how to get back up and just fight, fight through it. And the conditioning in that, the conditioning in that is is one of a kind. That like there's nothing like it. And then hips, oh my gosh, my hips have gotten so much better because of wrestling. Well, I can tell you, I've played with and coached a lot of wrestlers. I've never met a wrestler that played football that wasn't any good. Uh, just understand, like you mentioned, leverage the endurance. And just how to move your body is, is such an advantage that you only get to learn in, in wrestling. So I, I love hearing that about Definitely. you. Um, learning style. So obviously these college coaches that are watching and we wanted to get you to, to their schools, they want to know how best you learn. You're either a visual learner, you're a verbal learner, or you're a, a, a physical or what we call a demonstrative learner. How would you describe the best way that you learn? I can say all three, really, because you, you're not going to be able to choose how, how your how your college coach coaches you if if he's a if he's like a a, ver, a visual learner he's going to show you and if he's like if he's a verbal learner you're going to have to listen very well and do what he says so i feel like i i can do all three you know in high school i've gotten all three cuz i and, and multiple coaches coach Lee, he's a he's a verbal coach he's going to tell you what to do and you know you have to do it uh my position coach coach Kimball, He's a demonstrative coach. He he shows us how, how to do things, how he wants how he wants it to happen, and that's exactly what we do. Okay, you're going in your senior year. Uh, talk to me about your definition of leadership and how you plan on showing leadership uh, for your senior year. Oh, leadership that leadership is that guy who's just gonna bring the energy to the team, and he's gonna he's gonna be the one that everybody's like, oh, like if, if somebody's looking down and they see that guy. They're gonna know. Oh yeah, it's time to bring it. It's time to. It's time to show out. And a leader is also gonna be that guy that's just gonna keep the keep the guy next to him accountable. And also, he's gonna want people to keep keep him accountable because he's not gonna be the only one. He's a he might fall off a few days, but he but he he'll pick it up every day. 
Well, I know Coach Lee does a great job in that program as far as uh, having the upperclassmen uh, mentor the, uh, the freshmen and sophomore. Tell us what you do to help mentor those, those freshmen and sophomore who are just entering the program. Oh, those underclassmen, those are my guys. I mean, I couldn't have a better relationship with them. Uh, AC, you know, he's, he's going to be a junior next year. And me and him are tight. And all, all, the, all the incoming freshmen, you know, since we have five, five stars on our line, we have a big senior, senior line, all those freshmen look up to us. And so we pretty much show them how it's done in varsity football. We show them, like, the energy that, that picks up, the speed of the game. And we show them how, like, how we just do things around, around varsity football. Okay. Tell me about the, your workouts. Obviously, you're a big, strong guy. Uh, tell me uh, what kind of leadership you show in the weight room to get, to get guys bigger, faster, stronger. In the weight room, I'm always going to be a guy that's screaming. You could ask anybody. I'm always that guy that's just going to be like, if I see a guy struggling, I'm always going to be over there to I'm, I'm be in his face screaming all the time, get it up, get it up, you got this, go, go do what you have to do. But personally, right now, I'm, my workouts are, consist of full body workouts. It's a mix, like just a mixture. Sometimes it's just strict upper body, and sometimes it's just a mixture of both legs and upper body. And at home, the my trainer's been giving me workouts for like core and upper body. So like, after every set of upper body or lower body, uh, he mixes in a, a set of core. Well, something that we rarely talk about in football, you know, quarterbacks and all the skill positions, they have goals of how many yards they want to rush for, pass for TDs. From a lineman perspective, what are some of the individual goals you're setting for yourself for your senior year? Senior year, get to the second level more, for sure. That That's one thing I definitely want to do. And then opening up holes. I want I want to be able to, like, I want to be able to, I want Quan and AC to see that, like, see that hole right away and be able to, and be able to punch, punch it down and get that touchdown. Okay. Do you guys uh, measure, like, pancakes or uh, pass blocking efficiency? What about some of those uh, stat-driven goals? So, yeah, sometimes we do. There's some games where we're like, this game, like whoever gets the most touchdowns, that they, like they're they're getting the most they're getting the most food at lunch or like like they're buying snacks or whatever. So personally, I just like personally when that happens when we count those pancakes, I I'm that guy to be like, all right, bet what what we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see we're gonna see because I know I'm gonna be the one that have to, that's gonna be on top. Simple question, but uh, coaches will ask this. Why do you think you can play at the college level? I feel like just my determination and my drive to get better every day and my coachability. Like, if you tell me, like, you tell me what to do, no matter how you show me, no matter how you tell me, I'm going to be that guy that's going to be like, okay, let me figure this out right away. And I'm going to do it. Also, just my drive just to get, like, get better, as I said, to work out every day and try to and attempt to get above everybody else that's, that's, already, that's already been at the college level. Luis, you have 30 seconds in front of uh, your favorite coach that you want to commit to. We won't name a school. Give me your elevator pitch on why that school should offer you a scholarship. Y'all should offer me a scholarship because I'm always going to be that. I'm always going to be that guy that's bringing the energy that's just going to keep the field loud and keep the field just energetic. And could be everybody's going to notice me. Everybody's going to look up to me. And if I see somebody slacking, I'm going to be that guy. That's gonna that's gonna look at them and be like, okay, you need to pick it up before, before something bad happens, and we need like we we get con we get consequence for it. So I'm gonna be that guy that's gonna keep everybody accountable. I'm gonna be that leader that just that pushes everybody to their limits, even when they don't have anything left. Great job, well, Lewis. You know I'm a big fan of yours and have been since your middle school days and your FBU days. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the field this fall. Uh, good luck in the rest of your recruiting. Please tell the family I said hello, and I'll see you uh, here in the fall coming up. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Coach. All right. Have a great day. You too.